Let us prepare our hearts and mind to worship our Lord Jesus Christ.
Today we light the first, second, third, and fourth candles of the Advent wreath. Each candle has a meaning. The first candle is hope, the second candle is peace, the third candle is joy, and the fourth candle is love. Jesus said to them, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. John 13, 34. Let us pray. Loving God, your mercy and compassion endure forever. Open our hearts that we may receive your love and following the example of your Son, spread that love to a love-starved world. Through Jesus Christ, who loved us to the end. Amen. Amen. Thank you for our James Carr family. Let us stand and singing our Advent hymn will be 234, not O come, O come, Emmanuel. 234, all, O come, all ye faithful. 234.
You go ahead. <laughs> For God so loved the world that God sent his only son. Come, child of love. love. Our creator's love transcends every boundary. Come, Come child, child of love. love. How can we respond with anything other than love? Come, Come child, child of love. love. We reach out with tender love to brothers and sisters all over the world. Come, Come Jesus. Jesus. Now it's time for children's moment. All the children come up. How about uh, macaroni and cheese? Yay. 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 Yeah. How about macaroni and cheese? Yay. Cookies. Ooh, yeah. yeah, what else? Santa. Santa, you love Santa? What? Presents. Presents? <laughs> wow. <laughs> How about, I, do, do you love your job? You don't have a job, do you? How many people love their job? All right, so stay there because that's a good thing. Okay, is that the same kind of love that Jesus showed us? Loving macaroni and cheese? I don't think they had macaroni and cheese back then. Is it the same? Stuffed you like stuffed animals? Okay, see, I said the word like. There's like and there's love. So we like macaroni and cheese and we like presents and we like Santa. But we love Jesus, and Jesus loves us, because it's here, inside, not in our tummies, but right here in our heart. That is the love that Jesus shows us and that we have for him. It's not, I like Jesus, and he likes us. We love Jesus, and he loves us. Okay? Really? Okay. <laughs> All righty. We'll stand. We're going to say the Lord's Prayer, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Whose Father? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
It's close.
Loving God, we thank you and thank you for being a God who continuously reaches out for us. No matter what we do, who we are, you are always, always available for us and help, helping us. And thank you for continuing to call us to be your people, no matter how insignificant we feel. We come before you in love and adoration for who you are and thus who you are making us during this season. The people who respond to your gracious action with a passion to be your kingdom, to be your body to the world, who so desperately need you. We lift up the needs of our brothers and sisters. We lift prayers for children, bright with wonder, as well as for those children without food to eat or a place to lay their heads, for those who have lost a loved one and then face this holy season without them, and especially remember Cindy and Lala May and all extended family to grieving for their loved one. We also pray for those who are ill, having trouble with a lot of our illnesses around, who are facing this time with the pain and suffering. We remember all of them in our heart, and especially we lift up Diane, Pastor Donald, and Mike, and Don, and Peggy, Tom, Luna, and Teddy, and also Laura's friend Sandy and uh, Ron and Brian and Florence Burton and Bob and Virginia Riorton. We have uh, so many in our hearts. God, give them healing and your guidance at this time. We pray for those who are affected by war, violence, May you give them peace around this season and the year to come. For those who are crying for help and hope, God be with them. We pray for the servicemen and women everywhere, close from home and far. And also the people who are struggling with the life, with the brokenness and depression, and lost the sense of the purpose of their life. God, give them the meaning of life through the love that surround around them. We pray for this nation and the world that the peace be around with us in this nation, especially, and the world. Lord God, take all of who we are, all of who we really are, and make us into more than we would ever do, imagine, or dream for ourselves. Take our hearts on this fourth Sunday of Advent and set them on fire with hope, peace, joy, and love. May all we say and do in worship have form us into people who become a part of God's amazing story the Christmas story to redeem all of creation. And fill us this season with a compassion for one another. We seek to be restored by your grace and in your love so that we might truly appreciate and accept the precious gift we are about to receive. We love you, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our uh, prayer hymn is going to be Love Came Down at Christmas, 242. And everybody know this song? If not, we can all read together page 242. It's in the, also in the media.
said. That's good. <laughs> All right. Our first reading comes from Romans 12, 2. Don't be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you can figure out what God's will is, what is good and pleasing and mature. Also, John, 1 John 4, 19. We love because God first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers and sisters are liars. After all, those who don't love their brothers or sisters whom they can have seen can hardly love God whom they have not seen. Let us pray. Loving God, it is now a time for us to hear your voice. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight as listening to the word of God, our strength, our redeemer. Amen. If you are able, would you stand for receiving second reading from Gospel of Luke chapter 1, 46 through 55. We call it Mary Sunday. So we are going to learn about Mary, how she praised God even in her very difficult time. Mary said, with all my heart, I glorify the Lord. In the depth of who I am, I rejoice in God my Savior. He has looked with favor on the low status of his servant. Look, from now on, everyone will consider me highly favored because the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. He shows mercy to everyone from one generation to the next who honors him as God. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered those who arrogant thoughts and proud inclinations. He has pulled the powerful down from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with great things and sent the rich away empty-handed. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, remembering his mercy just as he promised to our ancestors, to Abraham, and to Abraham's descendants forever. And these are the, the words of God for the people of God. Thank Thanks be to God. It may be said it. Let me ask you with this question. What is the greatest gift of all for you. <clears throat> the greatest gift of all is Christmas love from our loving God. The greatest story of all, you can think about, but for us today is Christmas story of love, which became reality to all of us. And now it's our time to turn that story with others. Christmas is the best time for all of us to hear or see the movie, watch the movie, and especially the TV um, specials. Everything from it's a wonderful story to a Charlie Brown Christmas, I love those, <laughs> to Elf, to the Grinch, and to a Christmas Carol, and beyond. 
you can say more. They are all great stories to remind us each year around Christmas season what is like really Christmas. However, do not forget the original Christmas stories, the ones that in a real sense, in a real way, gave birth to you and to all the others. On the fourth Sunday of Advent, we come to the last theme of Advent season, love. We can talk about love a lot of the time, but especially around this season, love, sacrificial love. Today we have fully, more fully experienced the amazing love from God. And this Advent truly will celebrate Jesus as our law. However, if you already heard the scripture this morning, Jesus, our love, couldn't possibly come to the world without someone. Someone has a key players at the birth of Jesus. Someone whose heart was willing and humble. Someone whose love would change everything for the history. Her name is Mary, the mother of Jesus. Every year at this time, we read a passage of Luke's gospel that tells us how the 14 years old Mary responded to the shocking, really shocking, the unexpected news from the archangel Gabriel that she would carry a baby and that baby would be a savior of all the people. In the midst of a confusing, unexpected news, Mary responded by saying boldly, my soul magnifies our Lord. My spirit rejoices in the Lord. It wasn't an easy decision for 14 years old Mary, but she chose to magnify God. She decided to use her heart, her whole heart, her spirit, and her body for God's great plan for all the humanity and make God's love make known to the world. It wasn't easy, but this is the greatest original story of a Christmas ever. Without her willingness, it wouldn't happen. Mary was the first person who was asked to be a part of the Christmas story, but she wasn't the last. God continued to call people to be in the Christmas story so that we can share the Christmas story every year, the same original, and also new Christmas stories to the others. So now we are called to be part of a Christmas story, called to participate in the Christmas story in a very different way than Mary was. We are called to make the hard choice to love. It requires something from you, something from us. It requires us to invest in others. It requires us to give ourselves. And most of all, it requires 
to be willing, willing to do. But the love is to be a center of the willing. I recently watched Charles Dickerson's A Christmas Carol. It is a story of man, Ebenezer Scrooge, and how he was transformed from a grumpy, sour, stingy miser to a generous and kind and loving man. And as I was watching, I started to think about a lot of Christmas, a lot of those other Christmas show or stories I like. The main character often goes through some sort of a transformation. George Bailey finds hope again, and the green cheer heart grows three uh, sizes. Charles Brown learns what Christmas is all about. Advent is all about getting ready, getting ready for your heart to change. Advent is all about our own inner transformation and about opening up to the new way of our being and new way of God's bigger plan in this world. We as Christians are supposed to transform the world for good. That's tall order from God. But it's not easy. It's hard to change the world unless you start to change yourself. The most important truth is that you cannot create love in the world until you find love in yourself and that love changes us. Even Christmas movie knows this. The Scrooge story is a miraculous transformation. Dickinson is saying that no matter how cruel, hard, old, bitter, and unpleasant we are, there is a good in us and we can change it. And Scrooge realized how bad he was, then his heart was transformed as a different person. We have all probably read and watched another movie, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. It starts out every who down in whose beer, I mean, who beer like Christmas a lot. But the Grinch who lived just knows of who beer did not. The Grinch hates the celebrations. He hates everything that people celebrate. Hates the singing, hates the presents, he hates the whole thing. So he had a plan to go down to the village in the night, back up, huge back, back up all the trappings of Christmas, take all the Christmas presents and ruin Christmas. And he goes, and the next morning he stands on his mountain waiting for the people to wake up and be devastated, but instead he hears singing. The who's wake up and it doesn't matter to them that they didn't have a trees or presents or decorations. It turns out that no matter how he tried to take away from them Christmas comes. Christmas came anyway. And it stuns him. 
and he says to himself, maybe Christmas doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas perhaps means a lot more, a little bit more. The story tells us that the, the great heart grow three sizes that day. And he returns all the things he took from the people. And if welcome to the feast table, and he sat down with them, and of course he and carved the roast, the turkey. When he saw the love that the town had, and when he realized that this love was inside of them and couldn't be taken away, and that's when he realized and what it was all about. And that's when he was changed too. We are not who's from who's built town, but we are Christ Christians. And we are the people who spend this time of year preparing our hearts for the one who is yet to come and being transformed in the process. And we have something we can share with the world. We can celebrate with a lot of things with your family, but it's not all about it. It's about giving to others. This time of year, no matter what is happening around us, we are called to love this world. How to love the world? You can tell me whatever you have done in a few um, months in the past or what you are going to plan to do. Helping people, feeding the homeless and hungry children, visiting the elderly and the uh, lonely, the less fortunate, being an angel to others, especially who are having trouble these days, making room for others at the dinner table, <coughs> extra praying for the world, this nation especially, and the world who are um, having trouble. And that's how we prepare our hearts for Jesus. That's your Christmas story. You all are choosing to magnify God's love for the world through your actions. We've been talking about a lot. Now it's time for us to, to do actions. And your story is one that can inspire all of us through your actions. The original Christmas story began with Mary and Joseph and the baby and the manger and the low room at the end. But that's not the end of the story. The great Christmas story continues to play out. The truly incredible things is that you and I are invited onto the stage and we even get to choose our own lines. And so as we prepare of Christmas, the Christmas Eve, just a few days from now, here's a big question for all of us. What is your Christmas story going to be and going to say? My hope is that your Christmas story is going to be full of uh, good words and actions to magnify our God and to live our Christmas story. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you, thank you for Jesus, for his love and for saving this world. He's coming and coming again until we as a feet and hands and hearts of people to transform the world. 
and God again help us. We only have a two days away from Christmas. Help us again the deep meaning of this season and to walk hard, be transformer of this world. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So let us uh, prepare our hearts to bring our offerings, our tithes, ourselves, our pledges, our Christmas Eve offering to the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are singing the, the first Noel, first one, and the second time we will stand up singing verse 5. Number 238, you can look at the media and let's sing with the music.
peacemakers into the world, studying in our family, in our community, in this nation, into the world. The peace which passes all understanding keeps your heart and mind with the knowledge and love of God, the Father and the Son, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, remain with you, among you, on this Christmas day, and in time after, so that we can celebrate the Christ, the Jesus Christ, our King. We all say, Amen.